Hello, Internet. Today we're going to have some demonstration about Keras pre-processing layers. Now, Keras pre-processing layers is great if you want to have a visual data augmentation, for example, and you are operating with TensorFlow 2 and Keras. So I would say let's dive right into it. Here we go. Now we import all our libraries, NumPy, TensorFlow, Keras. We download some predefined data. We have a look at the metadata that we see the structure. And as you can see, there are example images from flowers, photos, yes. And we have the features. We have an image and we have a label, a class label. And we have five number of classes. So very easily, we have a total number of samples of 3,670 pictures. And these are our data that we are going to operate on. So beautiful. Let's start right on and let's have a look at our picture. Now, tulips are nice, but I think we can do better. Sunflowers, not really what I'm looking for. Yeah, this is a nice picture. So let's run with this picture. So what we do, we have a look at it. We have define our figure size 1010. So show me the picture. Here we go. Yeah, this is a nice picture here. We can see a lot. We have a size from 320, I would say, and 270. This is our image size. Let's check the shape. We have a tensor shape of 266. Okay, 266, 320. Yeah, 320. And we have three. Uh, RGB channels, I suppose. Let's have a look at the image. It should be a tensor. Yes, a beautiful tensor. Yes. So as you can see here, we are operating in integer from 0 to 2 to 5. This is our typical RGB values. So if we want to have now some augmentation of our visual data, we want to rotate it. We want to change the content of the size of the brightness of whatever in this picture we have to standardize and normalize the picture sizes or whatever there's the beautiful thing of keras pre-processing layers so let's dive right into it we have uh, tensorflow keras sequential simple model and we say okay layers resize and we have a resize to 200 and 200 plus 100 300 and then we, you can do some rescaling and you have some random rotation um, given that it's it ranges from zero to one. So we have dot three. Beautiful. Okay, and now we say, let's have a look at the picture. How does it look like? Yes. So we have a lot of operation going on. Now, the first operation is. Heaven's sake. You have now instead of let's just uh 266 to 320 we have now um done this to 200 300 so this is 200 and x is 300 so we have a resizing performed uh we have a random rotation as you can see here this picture here where the domes are straight up and they are a little bit different here they go in a clear inclination and this looks good. So we have a picture transformation done in TensorFlow with Keras. But of course, you can also have some random flip, let's say some vertical. Yeah, we don't have to look at the shape. You know what it is. Ah, and as we see now, if I uh, perform the operation four times, this is our resize, rescale, and rotate so this is this one here resize rescale rotate we have the original picture then rotated now I rotated another rotated so you have quite a lot of pictures and if you want to just the flip let's do the flip and have a look at this and we say oops ah oh, there's something not working right so and with the flip rescaling we see we have a problem here because it tells us clipping input data to the valid range is 0 to 1 for floats or 0 to 255 for integers. Okay, so let's examine what's happening here. 
we have Whippick. Let's have a look at this. What is our notation of this tensor? Ah, as we can see, we have floating point notation, 255. And as we have here, we have integers 255. So we just have to, if we do the flip rescale, we just have to do a rescaling. Now, I already prepared this, so we just do a rescaling of change. And if we do this now, come on. We have now the perfect color distribution again on our pictures. And what we have, we have a flip. And the flip is defined as, where was my flip? My flip was vertical. Okay, so a lot of different pictures. <laughs> Uh, da, 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 da. Yes, number one to ten. Yeah, and the shape, of course, is 266, 323, like our original picture. So you can see, you can do quite a lot of, if you have, for example, here, defined your current sequential uh, model, and you have layers, and the layer performs an operation, for example, oh, this is the old one. Uh, do a random flip vertical or horizontal and vertical, whatever you want. And this here, experimental dot preprocessing, this is from an old version because now this is a standard in your TensorFlow. So you just can say layers rescaling. And this is what he's doing. Now, if you want to have some further information, let's see if it works. Yes view the source you can see here now if you are interested in rescaling operation on the layer it gives you exactly the code the original tensorflow queries code so we have here the class rescaling it gives you a, a, a nice interpretation a pre-processing layer which rescales input values to a new range and this is exactly what we are looking for for instance to rescale an input in the 0 to 255 RGB range. To be in 0 to 1 range, you would just uh, pass scale 1 of a 255th. And to rescale something else, you have even offsets defined. And rescaling is applied both during training and inference. So this is it. And if you want to check the code, you see the code. So very nicely with TensorFlow, you can immediately find out. So we do have here the rescaling. And as you can see here, our picture turned out just beautiful. Now, what we can do with our Keras pre-processing layers. At first, the idea was uh, a set of Keras layer aimed at making pre-processing data fit more naturally into the model development workflow. So you want to have in your operational workflow, the pre-processing data within your model development so you could run different experiments and see exactly the result so this is quite easy as it just showed you tons of low sequential model we later going to switch to another kind of model and then you just add the pre-processing layer you created you defined and we have defined two pre-processing layer for our data set we have resize rescale and rotate and then we just have a flip and a rescale and then you have your convolutional and pooling layer or whatsoever is within your original model you want to train. So there are two important points. The data augmentation will run on device synchronously with the rest of your layers, and it will benefit from GPU acceleration. Now, this is really, really interesting. And if you want to have a deep dive, I have a own video on TensorFlow data, the TensorFlow input pipeline. If you have the CPU and a GPU, depending the interplay in your TensorFlow input pipeline between CPU and GPU acceleration and whatsoever. And if you want to have oops, a deep dive into this, I have an own data performance uh, Python notebook where I can show you exactly if you have the different ETL processes and how uh, the processing on CPU and GPU is affected. There's something we call prefetching, and then of course you have auto-tune functionality, but this I will show you maybe in another 
uh, video. Here you have the pure theory and a notebook to play a little bit with this. But let's go back to our notebook. So we learned. Great, we have a GPU acceleration now working for us. And of course, the other option with Keras pre-processing layers is you can apply it simply only on your data. So you do not have to integrate it into your model as a specific layer, which was the intention to have this close interplay between feature engineering and model development. So now we just have TF data, just show you auto-tune functionality. And then we define a function pre-processing only on your data set. And here we have our resize, rescale and rotate and whatsoever. The shuffle, a batch size, and you have a buffer size. You can also auto-tune. So this is the other solution. You use it just on your data set. And of course, if you are really working with pictures or with images, with TensorFlow, the good information is that currently we have a tensorflow.image API and it provides eight such random image operations. You have brightness, contrast, crop, flip, left, right, flip, up, down, U, GPEG quality, saturation. You can all of this. So let's have a short demonstration of this functionality. And we go with the first image. This is a beautiful image, so you have a look at it. And then we just say tensorflow.image flip left, right. So if we flip it left and right, here we have the original image on the left side and the augmented flipped left, right image. You can see there is a mirror between them. Otherwise, those are absolutely identical. Now, if you want to have RGP to grayscale, no problem at all. Just have a look at this. And here you can see this is your original image. And if you want to have it transformed to a grayscale, this is the augmented image. Of course, you can do uh, play a little bit around with saturation. You see the red is coming out really strong here. Or you can have brightness adjustments, whatever you like. So for dot four, you see brightness is reduced. You can have a crop, crop functionality, central fraction. You can define whatever you like to be cropped. So here you see it's focused in the middle. You have a very simple rotational functionality for your TensorFlow, so just 90 degree. And as you can see, you can have a series of uh, TF image files here. Oops, here we go. From the original image and augmented image and different zoom factors and whatever. So you have a lot of commands within TensorFlow for the visual um, modification of your pictures. So it is really great if, let's run back to the, our heading, to use Keras pre-processing layers for this functionality. And as I told you, you can have your pre-processing layers as an integral part within your models, or you can have them as layers that apply only to your data set. And if you have TF data, you have the TensorFlow input pipeline. There are further optimization steps you can do to increase the performance of the interplay between CPU and multiple GPU. So Keras pre-processing layer, a beautiful thing you should definitely know if you're trying to optimize your model, if you're working with visual data, if you have some data augmentation task and you're working with TensorFlow or specifically with Keras. I say thank you and I see you in the next video.